Rock, highly rock. Everybody want to highly rock. Come on. Rock. No, seriously, welcome back to Adore Cream. We reviewed Purple Rain, the album. Now we're reviewing Purple Rain, the movie. And I'm going to break this down into several parts. And who knows, it might flow into a second video. It may, it may not. Okay, first of all, introduction. Purple Rain is a musical drama movie which was released on the 27th of July 1984 in the USA, featuring a prince playing an act, a singer called The Kid, who is in his own band, The Revolution, playing in a nightclub called First Avenue in Minneapolis. Okay, the story takes place amongst the tension and drama of him meeting and falling in love with a new woman called Apollonia, his rivalry with the um, Time and other groups, and also his internal struggles with his own abusive parents and his own abusive relationship. Okay, the, 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 the movie was released and made $70 million at the US box office. Alright, so there's your introduction. Now, history and production. First of all, um, the history of the movie goes back quite a long way, right back before when it came out. When Prince was on the 1999 tour, Prince could kind of see, you know, he had all these groups and he was making all this music and he could see just the dramatical aspects of it. So he thought, why not make a movie about, you know, you know, coming to terms with his fame and a sort of coming of age story. And also making a movie too would get his music out to a much wider audience because this was at a time when the um, 1999 singles of the Rare Corvette were just breaking through. So he pitched the idea to Warners and initially Warners were not too happy about it because... First of all, Prince was only just breaking through, and um, given the history of a lot of, um, how shall we say, rock movies, they were kind of sceptical about, you know, letting an almost unknown star go ahead and make his own movie. And they were probably coming from a good place there, because, first of all, the first script for the movie involved basically Prince's parents going crazy and killing themselves, and all sorts of darker dramas, and then... Um, Second of all, um, there have been a rash of really bad rock and roll movies since the 50s. I mean, let's face it, generally when you have rock stars in movies, they, most of the movies were pretty terrible. I mean, Elvis Presley, he wrote, did about 30 turkeys in a row. Everyone remembers Elvis for his music, not his movies. Even David Bowie, realistically, I mean, I love the way it came on. He can't act. Even Madonna, realistically, she had two good roles, and I mean, it was hard to stuff them up. You know, Evita, I mean, and I think she actually tried very hard to stuff that role up. Um... And then, of course, this is 1983, so we're only a couple of years after the end of a rash of some really bad disco movies. Basically, disco music, catchy as it was, produced some of the most god-awful movies of all time, such as The Apple, which might be the very worst movie ever made. Um, thank God It's Friday, which had a lot of self-deprecating humour from the Commodores. You know, they dropped the M-bomb all over the place and had some very hellaciously unfunky, you know, props. Um... Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Clubs Band, not the um, actual um, Beatles album, but actually a really horrible movie starring the Bee Gees. I never even saw it, but I just heard bad things about it. Um, two very bad roller disco movies. One was called Skate Park USA or something. And of course, um, Can't Stop the Music, which featured the gayest band in the world, the village people trying to play straight men. So, disco movies, basically, I mean, a lot of record companies are like, mm, um, maybe not. You know, but Warner Brothers, given they did make the movies, but then again, come July 1983, the tour was over. Warners could see that Prince's albums were selling on the charts more now. Um, he had three top ten singles in a row, and also Prince had managed to get the ear of William Blinn, a scriptwriter who had a big hit with the musical show Fame. And um, also, at the same time, too, what had happened was in the initial interim, um, Flashdance had come into the theatres and done really well, and that was quite, even though it wasn't really a rock star movie. It did actually feature dancing and music, and it did a massive turn at the box office. And of course, again, we had the um, success of fame. So things had changed. So initially, they, Prince and um, his managers decided they would front up half a million each to do a movie. And then um, Warner Brothers came to the party, and originally they were going to give $3 million, but it took until late August when um, they went, I mean, Prince's managers, including Albert Magnoli, and he also got a new project manager, Alan Leeds, fresh from his run with um, James Brown, to come in and sponsor the thing, and they managed to pony up a total of $7 million of mixed contributions. And then, so what happened, so now the movie was a go-ahead. Um, then we had a few hassles, first of all, with the script. The first script was that both of um, the kid's parents die, and he doesn't get the girl. The second version was only daddy dies. And there was all this toing and froing. And then originally they wanted to get James Foley in to do the directing, but he wasn't available, so they ended up with, um, basically, William Blinn had to go after advising Prince, and he found them too strange, saying he'd set up meetings at one place and go back and never meet up. And then finally he caught him, and then finally um, he had to talk to him and realise that, you know, Prince was burying his soul and that realistically this movie 
was going to be a lot about basically Prince playing himself on the screen. But it had this sort of believable grittiness to him that made him want to get involved. And also, like most of the other people who are backing this project, I mean, Alan Leeds, after we just come off a big you know, term with um, James Brown for the past 20 years, they could see the guy's music, they could see his ability to write songs, play and manage all these groups, and they realised that they were dealing with an absolute one of the kind talent here, and we could cut a movie on the guy, basically. And plus, he was already writing a series of albums which everybody knew were going to be the greatest albums in the history of music for a long time. So they said, let's do it. <clears throat> but there was too much script going back and forth. Still, July, August 1983, Prince got members of Vanity Six in the time along with the revolution to do acting and dancing classes. From what I read in um, Alan Light's book, it seemed that the um, acting classes went down really well, um, but the, um, the dancing classes didn't, and a lot of people didn't really stick with them. Morris Day stood out as the, basically the clown who was disrupting everybody, but as you know, he became better in the movie. And then finally, in September 1983, Prince gave all the groups an old moment and said, look, this Purple Rain project's going ahead. I need a commitment. Either you're going to stay or you go. And basically, Vanity left, and Morris Day was threatening leaving too because after we had the internal scruples of the time, so basically, this threw a new problem up for Prince. They really wanted to start shooting in September, given um, Minneapolis's very fickle climate, but they couldn't get to it. So um, they had to basically go to LA and start hiring new actresses. First of all, the actresses coming through the door weren't impressing him until Apollonia walked through. Basically, Pat Patricia Cotero met Prince. Prince said, yeah, I can work with her. I mean, despite what everyone said, they never had any torrid relationship. They were just good friends. Apollonia did have beauty. She did actually have some acting experience. The problem with Apollonia, though, was she was not a singer. So um, still, they went ahead, and finally, at the end of October 1983, Prince had written most of Purple Rain, and that was in the can. He'd also done most of the writing for the Apollonia 6 and Time albums. So it was time to start filming this movie, and apparently, depending on whose source you read, the first day of filming was October 31st or November 1st, 1983, which is late autumn in um, Minneapolis. One story goes on about how they had eight feet of snow on the third day. Well, apparently, um, someone went back and did looked at all the weather reports and saw that. Minneapolis's autumn winter of 83 was quite mild and it didn't really start to get into heavy snow until no late December. In November, most of the days were quite dull for high of around about 10 degrees centigrade. And um, except for the first day where it was about 20 degrees and that was uh, where they filmed all the motorcycle scenes and Apollonia jumping, jumping into the lake. Apparently the actual date on Prince Vault said that happened on the 2nd of November. I believe it. You know, it's nearly winter. I mean, Minneapolis has a continental climate. The trees are practically bare by the start of November. You can also tell it's late in the year because you look at the very long shadows being cast that's probably not um at the end of the day it's probably like the middle of the day the sun's about 20 degrees above the horizon so that's enough of the technical stuff the other thing you might notice too is basically all the outdoor shots were done in the first week of november the second week of november and third week of november were the shots of like you know jim morris day walking down the street and all the ones of people walking into the club and stuff and then in most of later November, early December was basically all the indoor scenes. And of course, as some of you might have noticed, like you know, there are stills from the when Doves Cry part and the part with Morris and Billy walking down the street going, Yo man, what you need to be doing is getting something commercial, something that'll work every night. Like a girls group. That was actually filmed in April nineteen eighty four in Los Angeles. Because the Minneapolis River did close down on them. And despite the fact it was April, apparently it was a very cold weekend then and um the scenes were um done when it was about again about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, the funny thing about those scenes though is that in the Wind Doves Cry video part there's a part where Prince is riding his motorcycle you may notice that the ground looks much greener in certain parts and the sun seems to be much higher in the sky. Why? Because that's Los Angeles in April not Minneapolis in November. I mean only nerdy people like me will notice this stuff. So basically the shooting took right up until basically six weeks and finishing just before Christmas 83 and then there was a couple of weeks in April 84 when Prince was in LA and a lot of the shooting was redone then and the mixing took place in April and May of 1984 and by the middle of June at the same time when Doves Cry and, um, the, and the Purple Rain album were climbing the charts um, basically Warner's got to see a mix of Purple Rain and decided they liked it and it was going to be released in 917 theatres. But just some other notes about the um, shooting apparently um, Morris Day missed a lot of the sessions he was high on drugs Despite that, Morris Day steals the show, and the other thing too was that you heard it on my time video, basically one of the new bass players for the time showed up late to the first day of shooting and promptly was fired because um, when Prince had a real temper tantrum with Morris, whose attitude about it was negative by this stage, and also a lot of the other cast members were complaining it was like, you know, six o'clock in the morning and having to get makeup on and all this shit. 
and it was freezing cold outside. So that's the production. All right. Okay, next, um, the actual story, okay, so the actual story of the movie, um, I've already kind of summarised it, basically what happens is the movie opens up on a high note, basically um, it shows the nightclub, First Avenue, Apollonia is coming to town from New Orleans, she jumps out of the taxi, the taxi says she owes 30 bucks, she tries to run away, she runs into a really sleazy hotel, meanwhile the kid arrives with his, motor, with his guitar strapped to the back on his motorcycle, jumps up on stage, plays Let's Go Crazy, crowd's going bananas, and then basically while Apollonia gets herself settled, she goes into the First Avenue and tries to get a job. Ends up bumping into Jill Jones. Jill Jones says, why don't you watch where you're going, blah, blah, blah. The time jump on stage and sing Jungle Love, and that's hilarious. It's the part where Morris goes, why don't you stay a while, see how it's done. You know, and then um, basically after that, um, after the music is over, I mean, Prince stands behind Apollonia, and the whole time she can't say anything, but Prince is standing there going, then she turns around and goes, I really liked your song too. And Prince is gone, which cracks me up. And then, <laughs> I'm sorry, the kid. And then he goes home and he sees his parents having a fight. And he knows, like, you know, and the barbers go, don't I keep the heat on? You know, and he slaps her and Prince runs and goes, Mom, Dad, he heard you already. And then Dad whacks him and goes, can the man get any silence around here? And then it shows him in his basement playing them tape, you know. And then the next day he wakes up, he's in the mall looking at the cloud guitar for the first time. Apollonia comes up and they have that famous meet-up scene. Then he's on the motorcycle out in the country, instant love. Prince talks to Apollonia, makes her jump in the lake to prove herself so he can help her with her career. He drives off, she comes back. You know, you get to see Apollonia's jugs, basically. And then Prince jumps on his motorcycle and there's a bit of back and forth. Then afterwards, you know, basically, um, Morris is talking to Billy Sparks, the owner of um, First Avenue. And he's saying, look, man, the kid's been fucking up. He ain't been packing them like he used to. Yeah, what you need to do is get someone more commercial, something that'll work every night, blah, blah, blah. They decide that, you know, he wants to see that Apollonia baby. And, you know, and then um, it shows Morris in the um, St. Louis Park rehearsal space, working with Apollonia 6, which are basically Morris's group. And he tells them off for not, you know, doing it good enough. They walk out on the street. Girl bumps into Morris and Jerome. And basically um, they end up throwing the girl in the um, wastebasket. I mean, sorry, in the miniskip. And then um, they walk off, and then Prince is um, playing some music. Things are breaking down. Prince plays Baby, 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 What's It Gonna Be, all that. And then Apollonia falls in love with him, pretty much, and it shows him having that great sex scene after the song. Then after that, he's playing Computer Blue and all that other shit. And basically, things are falling apart in Prince's world. His parents are still fighting. And then, like, he gets really angry with her. And then um, Morris starts chatting up Apollonia. And then after that, Apollonia buys Prince that guitar, puts on the earring, but after that she goes, I'm going to join Morris's group. What? And he jumps up and bitch slaps her across the room. And then somehow after that, they're still together. And then after that, everything gets really bad. That's after Prince plays Darling Nikki and Billy Sparks comes and he goes, yo, man, what's up with this? What's up with your personal shit on stage, man? You know, all that stuff. And then after that, um, Jerome comes and he goes, I saw what you did out there. That was pretty fucked up. I don't like it. And Morris doesn't like it. And he goes, so? Just to show we're sympathetic to you, of course, he has a couple of tickets to Morris Night Show, and he goes off to the taste, sees Apollonia 6 perform on stage. He doesn't like it, they're acting like sluts. At the end, Prince picks her up, puts him on his motorbike, and says, come here. And, he go, and she goes, what are you going to do? You're going to hit me? And he goes, don't drink that shit, you know. Things really break down. Daddy shoots himself. Oh, of course, in the middle, there's the famous part, you know, he's running around on his motorcycle when doves cry, and that's before he goes to the taste to see Apollonia 6. And then after the taste, um, he comes home, Daddy shoots himself, Prince is in the basement, there's the meltdown scene where he absolutely trashes the basement and throws all the notes everywhere and discovers his father's music. He wakes up the next morning feeling really cleansed and starts making purple rain out of the tape the girls gave him and um, basically everything's happy again and then Apollonia comes down into the basement and helps him clean up the rubbish. Then he goes on stage and he realises he's got to kill or else. First of all, the time come on and do the most amazing version of the bird you've ever heard, pretty much. And then after that, after the time I've done their thing, the revolution comes on. He goes, this is a song I wrote about my father, Francis Howe. And it was done by the girls in the group. And next thing, he starts playing Purple Rain. And as it gets better, everyone starts, you know, nodding in time. But they get their, their um, lighters out. People absolutely love it. Then after that, the prince jumps into Baby I'm a Star. And um, I'm sorry, I would die for you then, Baby I'm a Star. And while those songs are playing on stage, it shows back and forth of, um, you know, father getting better. Prince and Apollonia making up, cleaning up the basement, everything coming together, you know, 
And at the end, it shows basically Prince leaping around on stage playing Baby I'm a Star. And the very last scene, which is going to crack you guys up, is when Prince climbs up onto the top of the speaker cabinets, jacks off his guitar. The guitar ejaculates, he turns around, and you see his face lit by floodlights, and then it goes into the credits and starts playing the song. So that is the story of Purple Rain. 111 minutes long. Okay, and like I said before, we're going to do two videos. That was the first one.